Absolutely. And, and we probably, you know, you actually mentioned some of this along the way, uh, but can we just briefly go through some of the physical exam things you're looking for as well when these patients come in? Yeah, the, the biggest thing I look for is uh, you evaluate the knee to see if uh, there's a large effusion. You know, people have effusions up to about a year. Um, you know, most of the stuff that we're talking about is not the painful total knee within the first three to six months, obviously. That could be a number of different things. Right. And you do see some of those in your practice, too. But this is more of the painful total knee after a year, two years of recovery where they really shouldn't have any sort of post-surgical pain lingering. Um, and so the first thing, and it shouldn't really have an effusion. Um, or anything like that. So if someone's got a, a, a remarkable effusion, that you know, that's an indicator to me that there could be something going on. Um, and then I, you know, I check the knee. I check their active and passive range of motion. You know, do they have an extension lag? Do they have a decreased range of motion? Do they have, um, you know, difference between active and their passive range of motion? Um, is their patella tracking well? Uh, check stability. Varus valgus stability, 0, 30, 90 degrees. Um, one thing I like to do uh, is I have the patient sit on the edge of the bed and, and let their uh, leg hang free with the bed elevated um, so that the weight of their leg is uh, pulling down sort of in flexion, like a, a tension flexion test. And, uh, and I basically see how much play there is in the knee. Um, and it, you'd, you'd be shocked at how much play there is in, in some of these people's knees and they have pain that they describe and it seems like flexion stability. Um, and so that's uh, one, one uh, t- uh, test I like to I like to do. Um, and then uh, I think palpation is, is huge. Uh, the most common reasons why people have pain after knee replacement, um, it's not infection, it's not um, loosening, it's it's IT band syndrome or pes bursitis, uh, patellar tendonitis. Those are the reasons why people will have new onset pain. They have this new knee that they love. They're starting to get into some new activities, and they get some overuse phenomena around their knee, and they. Um, IT band syndrome, I, I joke, if there's one thing I could remove from uh, anatomy that would make my life a lot easier, it would be the IT band. You know, I band <laughs> yeah. to me. Right. People, have the, people just have IT band syndrome, they have stroke and teric bursitis, and it's just it's this problematic thing. Nobody ever stretches well enough, and it just causes yeah. problems. People increase their activity. So um, it's a very – if someone's got pain, as you push on Gertie's tubercle, um, and no, no pain was really anything else than the mech- that's IT band syndrome. And you don't necessarily need to go that much further um, down the rabbit hole of, of your diagnostic uh, workup. Um, and gait analysis, I think this is huge. Um, you want to see if people have um, significant limp or if they have any weakness. And one of the things that gait, one of the things that's not really on here, I don't know if it's on the next slide, probably the most important exam you can do aside from range of motion stability palpation inspection of the of the knee is examining the ipsilateral hip because there are so many patients that you see in clinic that complain of knee pain around a total knee replacement and they just have they have a uh, you know severe arthritis in their ipsilateral hip and it's just referred pain down to their knee particularly when patients describe a diffuse pain and they can't really identify where they feel the pain they just kind of put their hand over their distal femur and they say it hurts down here and then you do a resisted straight leg raise test or you flex them up and internally rotate and they complain of knee pain with those maneuvers. And, and really the problem is the hip. So in those patients that will absolutely get a uh, weight bearing pelvis x-ray to make sure they don't have uh, moderate to severe hip arthritis. Um, so that kind of plays with gait analysis. Um, if you check their weakness, you can also assess for, for hip um, pathology with that gait analysis. Yeah, I actually, um, had a question come up about that earlier today. I got to go do, <laughs> I got to go look up an article about gait, uh, just kind of gait analysis and the different types of gait, antalgic, uh, right. uh, trend Ellenberg and short limb, you know, all types mm-hmm. of different things I got to look up tonight. Cody keeping me up super late. Not you, Dr. Cody, the other Cody. <laughs> not, not Cody. You. Confusing the, you. Yeah, my, my little man, Cody. <laughs> no, <I'm serious. laughs> uh, and the next step, uh, 